all. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Morgan, for joining us. Um, Philly, uh, hope you're all well. Um, yeah, look, it's um, just uh, playing uh, one of our favourite uh, music NFT artists, artist on the Raven Coin, the SOS, and that was one of his um, songs called Abbey. Um, again, uh, love his work. We all love his work, and we continue to support his work. And uh, this is our way to before the, our, the shows that I host uh, or co-host start, and um, try to put something at the end as well to keep supporting the people that have in our community. Um, but yeah, look, uh, I just um, it was also got a bit of time to um, get organised. Uh, so I just arrived at my destination um, after listening to the great show Morgan hosted before um, the Squawker Project. Um, probably should introduce myself first. Um, I'm Luis Miguel Alexo. I'm um, the managing director of um, Brick BC Projects. We tokenise Australian real estate property. Um, uh, and my co-host um, Jake, he just uh, just on cue. He just uh, just checked in, so I'll get you to join in. Um, when uh, we just um, add you there. Um, but but yeah, uh, the show we host, uh, this show is a weekly show, same time, same place. What is real estate tokenization? Um, just to going through fundamentals, what we have at the cold front, um, and uh, Jake will introduce himself uh, on cue. Jake, how are you? Hey everyone, Brick, sorry for being uh, late. I've got on a random errand I had to run, so uh, we're good now. But uh, hi everyone, my name is Jake Bernard. I am a project manager for Dwell Homes Inc. We are a home building company in Illinois, which is in the US of A. I'm also a chief financial officer of Renewal Blocks. We are tokenizing a Bitcoin mining farm on the Ravencoin blockchain. Fantastic. Um, what I thought we'd do today, um and Jack doesn't know this. He's actually going to be our special guest, and, uh, and I'll sh- and I'll go into a bit, a bit of detail as to why you're going to be the special guest, Jake, uh, as well as my co-host. Um, uh, obviously, a lot of things happening around uh, the Ravencoin community. Uh, although today's show, obviously, actually, it's always focusing on real estate, but um, today we have a bit of an open forum uh, as well to um, and get people to also come up and um, and, and give them a mic to be part of the conversation. Um, but what I thought today, we sort of go through the basic basics around what is real estate tokenization, as we usually do. Um, but then go into some of the things that are happening around uh, the Ravencoin blockchain in particular. Um, because as a community, I'm always I'm a big believer that um, you know the, the rising tides raises all boats. And um, obviously, whether it's real estate property, whether it's um, the NFTs, the, the movies, the music, and um, and the uh, mining like um, not project that um, obviously Jake and um, Xander and a few others are obviously um, are driving as their project. Um, but Jake, what I thought today, it's um, probably to start off the start off the open forum, and uh, there's some really big exciting news and activity around the the Renew Box um, project that you're driving. Um, obviously, you, you went overseas. There was there's some activity overseas, um, also at the SDO market. Probably we'll just go into a bit of detail because it's really exciting, uh, yeah, to see that activity, Jake. And um, I think it needs to be shared. Obviously, this show has been recorded, so. Um, Probably to give us a bit of a, obviously a bit of a world we've no doubt over the last week, week and a half from a renew box project perspective. But if you want to share those things with us, mate, that'd be great to hear from you. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'll just do a brief description of what renewal box is, and then I'll, I'll get into what's been going on the past week or two with the project because we have been around for a while. So um, I don't want to bore everyone with the information that's been put out there a lot. But uh, so renewal box is a uh, renewable energy company that is going to be Bitcoin mining using 100% renewable energy. We are planning on using a combination of solar energy and anaerobic digestion. Uh, Anaerobic digestion is uh, a form of energy generation that comes from methane gas. The methane gas comes from dried crops and animal waste. Um, And so we are partnered with a uh, anaerobic digestion farm um, in the UK. So uh, this, uh, this operation will be in the UK. And we will be hopefully launching um, our STO soon. So Renewablox will be going through a security token offering. Uh, we are going to be offering 1.5 million security tokens at $5 per token. Uh, this, these tokens will represent your ownership in Renewablox. And for each token, you will be distributed Bitcoin based on how many tokens you own. Um, so if you were to own 10% of Renewablox, you will get 10% of the Bitcoin that is mined within the first year. Uh, so lately, the uh, um, what's been happening with Renewablox is we have 
pretty much finalized our platform with DigiShares. Uh, so this platform is, is pretty flushed out. We are finalizing the uh, documents and stuff that are needed for KYC uh, because we need to have KYC, which is also known as Know Your Customer, um, in order for us to properly vet uh, investors, um, especially uh, to make sure everyone's following the relevant investor rules regarding to regulation crowdfunding um, and the amount that they're able to invest. And we're also, we also recently minted our security tokens on the blockchain. Um, I actually posted a video about it on my Twitter uh, about a week and a half, two weeks ago. And I can definitely pin that to the top of this uh, of this space so that if you haven't seen it, you can watch it. I, I, I was completely transparent with minting these tokens. Uh, there's no smart contract required, so no, uh, no hosting. Or not hosting, sorry. <laughs> no coding, sorry. Um, can everyone still hear me? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Okay, cool. So it just said I lost connection first. So it was really easy to do. It's a very secure way of doing it. And um, yeah, I'm going to go pin that tweet right now. So if anyone wants to go check out that video later, they definitely can. Easy process, Jack. I actually watched it. Um, very easy process, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like incredibly easy. I, I, I expected it to be a little longer than 10 minutes, even even though I knew exactly what I was doing when minting. I was maybe expecting uh, <laughs> like another step to be in there that I just was forgetting, or maybe the block time for issuing the assets was going to be too long because Ravencoin block time is one minute. So theoretically, you can get the whole process done in about four or five blocks or four or five minutes. I just like to talk a lot, so <laughs> the video ended up being 11 minutes. But, you know, it's good to describe what I'm doing as I'm doing it so everyone knows why I'm doing it as I'm doing it. So everyone can see the process of creating the tokens was completely, you know, full and fair. Like, we're not hiding anything. You can go and view the asset on the blockchain. It's a dollar sign RNBX. Um yeah, I mean, if I didn't video that, I uh, actually never would have been picked up by the STO show crew, uh, Kyle and Herwig. They, I, they didn't reach out to me or anything about it. They they watched the video, apparently, or obviously, and they, they put everything about it in their show. It was really cool of them to do that. Um, great exposure for uh, Renewal Blocks and Ravencoin and the security token minting process on Ravencoin. So I'm, I'm glad I, I documented that process because I'm sure no one else has... You know, thought of documenting the minting before. No, that was that was fantastic. Um, <clears throat> and the thing is, like, um, it's it's one of those things with um, the STO market. The guys, as as I've been saying before, it's, it's that constant engagement with the guys, their team. That um, we are we are on their radar. As far as the Raven Coin chain, we've been on, on on their radar for what two two three months now. We, and obviously, we had Kyle on this show. And obviously, we keep the keep constant engagement in terms of our community keeps constant engagement with them. So anything that we do, it, they, they see it straight away. So it was great that they picked that up, Jake. And then I was actually I was quite excited when I saw yesterday the the post or um, the, their YouTube video where they actually had uh, had the Renew Blocks project on and showing that. So that was uh, yeah, really. It just it, as I said, it just keeps um, it keeps reminding us in terms of that that constant engagement with people who are at the cold front. Who are educating to keep constant um, engagement with them because that's um, that helps all of us as uh, as a community in the in the various projects. So that's uh, really 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 exciting. Mate. They'll get so much um, exposure and uh, just that video with the STO markets. Um, yeah, and again, just demonstrates too, as you said, how easy it is to mint on the Ravencoin chain. Yeah, and it's really it's not known, especially uh, we've had meetings with T Zero. And DigiShares, uh, DigiShares is a little more educated on what Ravencoin is. T Zero, their team is, um, although they've been around for a few years, and they're the ones that are their or initial team. Their initial team was the people that were initially building Ravencoin. They uh, don't know about the tokens uh, and how they work on there, so they were pretty shocked when I was telling them how easy it was um, and how like it's it's secure it is because it does use Bitcoins. A UTXO model, which basically means once some once a transaction is made, it can't be reversed. So if I were to if you were to purchase five of the renewable security tokens and they're in your wallet, no one can take them away from you. 
So that is a very important thing. Um, there's no rug pulls. There's no smart contract vulnerabilities. It was something that uh, it's, it's still something that um, has to be taught. And once it gets realized, people will be tokenizing everything, literally everything, especially real estate um, companies and any assets that um, I guess have a reason to be tokenized. And, you know that can be fractionalized in their ownership. Absolutely, absolutely. This is why I wanted to have you be sort of the special guest as well today to showcase the Georgia Box. So it's obviously got relevance when you talk about fractionalizing real estate, fractionalizing a company in terms of the equity that comes with Lock Renewal Box. It all always relevance uh, in terms of um, what's happening today on the blockchain tokenizing assets. Um, like if we had a look, uh, like yesterday, um, the SDO market, they, they put some statistics out as to how many people are visiting their site from an SDA market perspective and obviously people are interested in terms of what's happening around asset tokenization, their numbers are going through the roof. Um, so that means as people are researching, people become aware, people are researching as to what is asset, asset tokenization, whether it be real estate, whether it be equity tokenization. Um, uh, again, there, there's a massive wave and um, I think now people obviously, they're doing their research and now starting to take action around that research, they're ready to do to jump in and actually buy, um, you know, tokenized property, buy um, tokenized equity in, in businesses like Renewable. So again, it's uh, it's as I said, the the, the bus, the, the bus um, speed. Uh, we're all on the bus, and the speed's getting greater and greater, and um, and we're all part of this, part of this journey. Um, but um, with Jake, in terms of the um, the the. The NFTs you guys have created to, on Ravenous. Do you want to just sort of touch on that in terms of how that ties back into um, the, the project? Um, and 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 I'm I'm proud to say that uh, on a, at a private from a private perspective, personal perspective, I'm actually quite honoured to be the first buyer of the Renew Box uh, New Box um, standard token NFT token on Ravenous. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to touch on that, and I did notice that. Um you purchased the first one, so that's awesome. You uh, once we start that thing up, uh, you'll you'll definitely be the uh, the only only winner if, they're, if you're the only one purchased. But I'm I'm sure that it'll it'll gain traction once uh, once the STO happens and the farms being built out and stuff. I'm sure we'll gain traction. Um, so I'll just uh, like to you know prelude this with uh, this quick statement. Uh, this NFT game that we've created. It's not, it's not uh, a promise of any profits. Uh, it is strictly a game, a type of raffle that we are uh, hosting with uh, company funds that we are setting aside based on the NFT sales. Um, so these funds uh, are going to be basically secured through security tokens. So for every NFT that is sold, um, it'll basically, we'll be putting aside a specific amount of security tokens that the company will set aside and the profits that those security tokens represent will be put towards the game. Now I'll start talking about the game real quick. So the game is called Renewal Block. Uh, Renewal Block game is a solo mining uh, Bitcoin NFC game. Uh, so basically as an NFC holder, if you were to own, let's say 10 of these uh, ASICs, so the NFTs are ASICs, you'd have 100 hash, right? So a hash is um, like hash rate and mining. So the more hash you have, the more of a chance that you have at mining a renewal block. So at the end of every month, there will be 10 renewal blocks that are quote unquote mined. And the people that mine them will earn the uh, Bitcoin that the, um, the security tokens represent that we set aside based on the NFT sales. So if we were to sell all 1,000 of our standard ASICs, there would be... 10,000 security tokens set aside for um, this game. So all Bitcoin that is mined for these 10,000 security tokens will be put towards this game. And, you know, who knows how much that could be. It could be a lot. It could be a little. It depends on Bitcoin. It depends on the network hash rate. But um, it is still a raffle, so not everyone is – no one is guaranteed to win. Zero people are guaranteed to win. But it's, uh, it's something that we're building out, um, a type of metaverse – uh, for Bitcoin mining that we are working on. Can't really say the name of it yet because we want to keep it private. Um, but this is just step one, was getting these models, getting the NFTs, um, putting them on IPFS, minting the tokens, getting them on Ravenist, 
it was it was a long process. It was a couple months actually, and so just getting us here was it was a huge first step because now we're working with more people in the community to continue to build this out. Um, anyway, anyways, <clears throat> so at the end of the day, um, these uh, these IMCs are available on Ravenous.com. Um, the game will commence once the farm is up and running, which will be in 2023. Um, this game is definitely going to um, you know persist. Like uh, basically be perpetual and it's not going to stop. It's going to be a part of the Renewable Blocks community. It's going to be a part of the Renewable Blocks uh, metaverse that we're planning on doing. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's a pretty good uh, stoppage point for that. I just rambled on a lot, but uh, it's a lot of information. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's no, good tech. That's good. Uh, again, I, I like the gamifying part of the things in terms of just quite a bit of fun as well at the same time. Given obviously sometimes, um, yeah, obviously we we we're working on respectively in terms of um, you know there are serious projects, but at the end of the, at the end of the day, you also need to have a bit of fun, and I and I see this as a bit having a bit of the gamifying, a bit of a bit of fun along the journey as well. So that's fantastic, mate. Yeah. So this uh, the um, the NFT game, it's it's something that we want, we would love to start like right now, right? But we are still uh, you know building going to be building the infrastructure for this farm. Um, and we still have to actually finalize the security token offering um, through DigiShares and, and start that to get funds. Um, we are backed by an anaerobic digestion farm that is going to help us get going. They already have the energy generation, generation capabilities. They already have solar panels. So we once we get the, the miners and the emergent cooling boxes, we're able to we're going to be able to, to build it and, and start that game up as soon as possible. Like, once we start mining, the Bitcoin will be going towards that game, as well as going towards the quarterly uh, Bitcoin distributions for all uh, renewable blocks security token holders. Fantastic. And, Jack, in terms of timing wise, uh, just a sort of, uh, is there a, a, a date that you're sort of aiming for in terms of the security token to, to be released when people start buying security token? So right now, we are finalizing the Reg CF and Reg S filings um, with our security specialist. And we are also just cleaning up the uh, process for investors to on-ramp themselves onto our onto our DigiShares platform. Um, this could still be a few weeks. Uh, we, were, we were talking to the ST, uh, security token market team, STM, and uh, they were saying that they've seen projects, you know, take as much as eight to 12 months to complete this process, but we're already pretty much there. And we've only been talking to DigiShares since uh, late to early, I think it was February. So we're only a month four and we're really on time. So I would like to say end of June, early July, but this all depends on, you know, when we get the filings back because we don't want to jump the gun and go, oh, we'll be we'll be filed eventually. Let's just start it because what if we get rejected or, or something like that? Maybe there's some uh, red tape that we have that we haven't crossed yet that we have to still work our way through because we want to make sure that the investor risk is limited um, on this project. Um, in regards to whether or not uh, renewable block security tokens are something that people see as a scam, right? Because there was an ICO craze back in 2017, 2018. There was a lot of illegal projects going on, unregistered securities. That's what a lot of these projects are or were. So now we're trying to change the ICO to an STO by going through all the right, all the right portals, all the right filings, making sure that if we do try to, you know, if anyone that does an STO tries to take the money and run, the SEC is going to breathe down their necks or whichever um, securities commission in that country uh, you're filing with is going to basically screw you over. So we're trying to make sure that investors see us as a risk-free um, investment in that sense because the crypto world is very, very unregulated at the moment. And we want to start off the regulated ball you know, getting that thing rolling, you know? So uh, the the timing is, is rough right now, but we are we are very, very close. I can't give an exact date. So, you know, mid or early, late June, early July is like, is our goal right now. That's fantastic. Um, it's always one of those hard things where obviously trying to give people some, some sort of um, timeline, but at the same time, 
you don't want to sort of give a timeline that um, you know becomes that you're always changing dates, and I've seen that with other other projects. Um, yeah, I mean, I have a look at um, Charles Hoskinson's with um, Cardona. What happened with the smart contracts? Uh, it became obviously it got a lot of flack in terms of the date just kept changing, and, and I think Ethereum's going through the same thing in terms of when it's going to a state and yeah, proof of um, proof of um, stake. Um, uh, in terms of the time, it keeps changing. I think, uh, especially when it's a new project, um, yeah, it's um, uh, there's actually one in Australia at the moment that's sort of been delayed by a year, but the, the, the date just kept changing. Uh, and this is actually a crypto project. Um, and again, the, the, the founders got a lot of flack. Um, people sort of then questioning whether it's um, you know it's a scam or not. And and the thing is, like, it's it's one of those things that you have to be very careful with, with dates, setting dates, and uh, and sticking to those dates. Because you start changing those dates um, a lot, um, people then start questioning the validity of the project, and that's always that risk, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Another thing I, I forgot to mention is since we have to, since we're doing Reg CF and Reg S, so Reg CF covers accredited and unaccredited investors in the US, and Reg S covers international investors, and so that's anyone outside the US, because we are tokenizing in the US. Um, so Reg CF requires us to crowdfund through a FINRA approved portal. Um, and because we want the investor on ramping to be as simple as possible, we are choosing DigiShares as our FINRA approved portal, but their approval is just being kind of like delayed a little bit. Um, and it's just because of, uh, very bureaucratic reasons. It's not, not, nothing on their end. It's just the process that is, is in place right now in our legal systems that are delaying things with that. So we can't commence the crowdfund for Reg CF until that is completed but for reg s as soon as we get the kyc um stuff flushed out we're we're going to be ready to go on reg s so international investors will be able to start purchasing the security tokens and there are also other limitations for reg cf um, investors it, it depends on your net worth or your net income you're only able to invest a certain amount regarding that but for reg s there's virtually no limitations it's, it's weird, but uh, I understand that the SEC wants to make sure that um, U.S. investors are protected because they're the ones that, they're the citizens that they're looking over, not quite reg as uh, international investors. Uh-huh. That's great. That's great. Um, there's some exciting things there. And uh, for those people that um, sort of join in, I'm saying hello to JC. Hello, JC. Hope you're well. Um, hope, man. Hope you're all well. I'm uh, just saying hello to Xander to join in. Hello. RxD, RxD, happy well, Abby, uh, Apolex, Apolex, sorry if I press your name, my eyes aren't actually too, too great, I'm looking at the screen sort of around, yes, yeah, so <laughs> from a distance here, but I uh, hope you're all well, thank you for joining, and um, yeah, we're just talking about, um, uh, although the show is obviously around real estate tokenization, but um, sort of introduce a bit of uh, other areas around asset tokenization in general, and we've just been talking about um, Jake's project that Jake and Zana have been driving, uh, Renewbox and uh, the elements around there, what's happening there. So uh, I guess some exciting, exciting activity, and uh, we're all looking forward to um, when we actually can start buying the the security token on their platform. So um, some great activity, and, the, and there's uh, obviously there's SDO market, as we said, SDO market um, have actually featured the the project, uh, Renewbox project um, yesterday. So uh, some great exciting news there, um, Jake. With with the um, you actually you had your team over there in Europe, I believe, during the week um, at one of the shows. How'd they go? Did they go well. It went really well. Our CEO Colin Wheeler was Colin Wheeler was there at the fintech forum. I believe it was in Dublin. He had a whole booth set up. Um, he met a lot of people. Uh, just displayed what we were, what we, our plans are. Um, there's actually a lot of expos that we're planning on going to, and it, this isn't the first one we've been to. Our CTO, uh, Alexander Moreno, was at, uh, at Bitcoin 2022 discussing renewable blocks, and there was another um, expo that Callum visited recently uh, before the fintech one. But we have a couple more lined up. Um, so at the, at this at this forum we went to recently, met some great people, met some uh, some people that are already have Bitcoin-based companies uh, who are interested in renewable blocks, met some people who've never heard of renewable blocks, obviously, um, also people that didn't even know STOs were a thing. So that's the thing that's been catching people's uh, eyes or ears, mostly, is the STO. Because, you know, Bitcoin mining, it's like, yeah, it's a thing. We Everyone kind of knows it's a thing. But what the heck is an STO? Uh, it's, it's offering your companies uh, equity and representing the ownership 
on the blockchain through tokens that are able to comply with security law. Like that's just something that is completely blown, like it blows people away. They don't, they don't even know that it exists. And you know, that's why we do these spaces. People need to realize that there is this opportunity for um, tokenizing any company, any business that um, is obviously considered a security. Because, you know, if anyone doesn't know what a security is, uh, base, I wouldn't say base definition, but a really basic description would be uh, if you are offering something that people can buy and hold on to, and their returns on that item are based on your efforts, that is a security. So if I'm buying, you know, oh, here, I'll, I'll uh, take this apple from you, right? And in five years, I can bring that apple back to someone else. And there's more worth to this apple because of the work done by the farmer that was selling me the apple. Maybe it's a rare apple or something. Maybe it's a golden apple. Then that's a security. So that's kind of the idea behind tokenizing uh, securities and why you have to do it. Um, and that's why you have to file stuff with the SEC too. Yeah, that's the thing. It's um, it's it's all very new, and, uh, and again, it's, it's making people aware. And um, and and I doubt the. Um, been over there in Dublin, Callum been over there in Dublin, he would have got a lot of um, great response. Because the Irish are very um, responsive in terms of new ventures. And uh, I know because I've got a few Irish friends and I've been around Irish people for, for a long time. And uh, they're always very adventurous. And um, and no doubt that would have been very dangerous too in terms of uh, the social aspect over there while Callum over there because they do love a beer over there in Ireland. So <laughs> I hope you got out of there okay. Not too, not too damaged uh, from the from the bees. <laughs> so you know another thing I like to I like to talk about um, is the idea of fra uh, fractionalizing uh, property uh, versus um, fractionalizing ownership of a property, um, or most likely ownership of the company that owns the property. So a lot of the questions I've noticed that we get and I've gotten it in the past is what's the point of you know, dividing this, this piece of land into 100 pieces, right? Like, how do I know which part I own? How do I know, you know, what if you don't sell it or something like that? Or what if the land goes down in price and we sell it? Do I lose money or what happens there? So there's, there's two ways of thinking about it. Yes, you could go the way of fractionalizing the property or fractionalizing the existing real estate that is on a property and you just hold that. Um, similar to what you're doing, you know, you're looking, you, you, uh, brick, you, you own properties in Australia, um, and their resale value in the future is going to be, you know, a lot higher. That's just how property goes, especially the high end properties, um, because of the Olympics, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So that's a great, that's a great way of doing it. But the thing that's, with, that's a great way of doing it. The thing with, um, people got to be a bit, bit, um, conscious of when they are obviously if, if people done their research or you're doing your research in terms of, um, accessing real estate property um, is that there's two ways to do it. Either you actually have a fractionalization of the deed that you become actually owner on the deed of the property or uh, the, 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 the property is owned by a special purpose vehicle. In our case, in terms of how we're doing it, it's uh, each property owned by a separate um, special purpose vehicle company that owns the property. And obviously the tokens are matched against the actual equity in that property. Um, I think people got to watch out is where the, the, in the first example where people are actually um, taking ownership in a, a fraction of the ownership uh, in, a, in a title deed of a property. You've just got to consider the, the risks around that. Uh, obviously there's different rules across different countries. Um, but when you start talking about actually taking ownership, uh, fractionalization of a deed, obviously you get all the you know you get all the benefits, but you also get all the risks as well. Because you think if something if someone sued you, think in terms of traditionally, if someone sues you, uh, you own that property, you own, and, and and someone sues you because someone's fallen over at the property or whatever the case may be, um, you actually become responsible in terms of that legal action being an owner in that property. Same principles apply if you if you actually are fractionalised in the actual deed, you also have all the benefits and all the risks that come to being that directly involved on that deed. Um, when it's a company, obviously you're protected because it's a limited liability company. The risk stops with the company, so there's no further any further risks to the actual um, yeah people who are involved with the token holders um, and so forth. Um, so just something to consider when people are looking at buying tokenized property as to whether they're buying a fraction of the deed or they're actually buying 
a, a token in the property, the special purpose vehicle that owns the property, because they're, they're two separate things. I know there's a model, and I won't, I won't mention who they are. There is a model, a, a property tokenization model in, in, the, in the US there, um, that they actually, you get a fraction of the deed of the property. Um, something just to, to be careful around that. Um, because obviously we we all, you know, most in terms, especially Western society, we live in a very um, litigate, litigating um, environment in society. And uh, obviously lawyers, and I apologise if there's any lawyers listening, that um, they're always obviously trying to chase money. Um, and I guess this becomes sort of sometimes easy targets um, from that perspective. So it's just a little bit of um, sort of insights um, in terms of when you are buying real, tokenized real estate, the things to watch there, yeah. And I, Jake, you terms when you when you when you start doing yours later on, um, you're using a special purpose vehicle for yours as well, aren't you? Yeah, I was just about to hop in about that. So uh, you know, besides the newer blocks, I'm also a project manager for Dual Homes Inc. I, I mentioned it at the at the beginning, but uh, again, uh, Dual Homes Inc. is a custom home builder um, currently in uh, Illinois, which is in the USA. Uh, we are looking into building rental properties um, or a rental community. Um, in Illinois, near where we operate out of. Um, and the difficulty with this was, oh man, you know, which properties are represented by which tokens? Um, so our idea is probably just tokenizing dwell homes as an entire entity similar to how we're doing renewal blocks um, and tokenizing, you know, the tokens represent the profit of the company, profit of the rentals, profit of this, profit of that. Um, it's just a simpler a method that way, treating dwell homes like a publicly traded company in a sense rather than you know bringing risk to the owners of the deeds you know that you were saying earlier so i, I we've been, i've been thinking about this a long time uh, how to, how was the best way of doing this and because of the uh um white label that we're doing with the neural blocks along with the um the filings that we are doing we should be able to we don't maybe we may not even have to crowdfund this we may just be able to uh, just do this straight up with the assets that are already going to be created and built here in Illinois. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of like our, our game plan. It seems like that may be how, how it goes. Uh, we'd like to get the, we like to build a little bit before we do any sort of funding because, you know, a rental community could be very small. It could be five to 10 homes. It could be huge. It could be 40 to a hundred homes. It really depends on the plot of land, um, whether the land is developed or not. If we're, we're trying to, you know, find lots here and there, or we find a huge, uh, you know, plot of lots sitting out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and the cost of the lots depends on the, the scale of the project too, and whether or not we're even going to be able to use Reg CF. Maybe we have to go to Reg A. Maybe we have to go to Reg A plus. Um, maybe we have to do a Reg D offering for accredited investors only. There's there's a lot of things that we have to figure out, and it depends on the, the size of the project. Um, and whether or not, or I guess how much we're able to do on our own before we reach out um, to investors for crowdfunding or some other uh, funding method. Yeah, that's great. Um, it, it, one of the things in terms of making people aware in terms of um, buying real estate, tokenized real estate, I think one of the, one of the big barriers is um, people to understand that you can actually buy you know, properties in another country. And I think that's sort of, I think there's still this, this, this realisation, okay, well, can you really do that? Because obviously people never had a chance before in terms of traditional real estate to go and buy property in, in another country because every country's got its own foreign ownership rules and so forth. So that, that's always been restricted. And I, I know here in Australia, somebody coming from overseas trying to buy a, pro- a property um, outright, um, you got to get, um, you, only can have, you can only have one property if you're a, a foreign a person coming to Australia, so it's really restricted. And if you, even if you own it, you've actually got to live in it in that pro, in that property. So it's very restricted in terms of foreign ownership. People coming here to actually buy investment properties um, where you're not a resident of Australia. Um, so I think that re, that sort of that big sort of barrier to before that's been, and and, and I think people still find it hard to comprehend that um, in the, in now in the property in the in the tokenized real estate world that they can actually access properties in another country. Um, is that what you would, what, that's, a, that's the experience I've had, Jake. Um, 
I know what sort of experience you've had, obviously been sort of talking to different people from different circles, but I think just that concept of owning property in other countries is actually quite a massive um, thing that people are still getting grasping their head around. Sorry, could you say that one more time, yeah. the last part? Yeah, no, I was just saying, I think people are still finding it hard to grasp the concept that they can actually have access properly in another country because obviously before you never, they never could because of different countries had different foreign ownership rules but now through obviously tokenized property they can actually access properties in all corners of the earth um and i think that's a really hard concept for the for the for the everyday person to comprehend they can actually now access property anywhere in the world it, it, what's been your sort of your feedback from when you've been talking to people in different circles yeah, so the thing I see a lot is, one, people don't even realize that, um, you know, real estate investment at a smaller scale than buying the entire property is a thing, um, public, you know, publicly, because, you know, it's been it's been a thing privately. You're, you're usually used to be, not used to be, still are, approached by larger um, companies on a private uh, basis. They give you a nice presentation and they, you know, they ask for ten, twenty thousand dollars for this gigantic commercial property. Um, that's been a thing, but still, that's not a small amount. So fractionalized real estate uh, ownership allows you to, to own something for, you know, a very small amount. And now your, your risk is not, you know, having to, to worry about the entire property on its own. Right. So internationally, um, it was something I never even considered when I first started these spaces. It was, um, or not these spaces, when I first joined this space. It was about uh, just being able to, you know, maybe push together uh, some funds with a group of people in the area or the people we work with or the subcontractors that we're going to be utilizing for building something on this property. Uh, international investment wasn't something I knew until I found your project or until I heard about your project. And I was like, wow, I can own a piece <laughs> of this, this property, this real estate in Australia. And so, you know, grab a couple of those tokens, that's for sure. Um, but it, you're right, it's something that it's just not known. The opportunity isn't there for people to even find in most cases, unless you are already in, in, engulfed in the real estate world. And it's a very, I wouldn't say niche world, but you have to dive headfirst into it. And then you're in there. And then you, you hear everything about it. But the everyday person, in, you know, everywhere in the entire world doesn't, they don't think about real estate. Except recently when home prices have really skyrocketed, especially in the U.S. Um, it's been something everyone talks about. So I think the natural progression of things is going to lead to more people hearing about this and how it works and how you can own property, you know, and proportionally through tokens on a blockchain um, that, you know, you can't, no one's going to be able to go, oh, you actually don't own these these tokens. You don't own the shares of this. There's no risk to that because it's on the blockchain. The transaction is there. It is it is immutable. Yeah, you're right. You're right in terms of what, as you, the point you made about um, given, obviously, the rise in real estate um, values. Um, and again, it's, it seems to be a common thing right across, across the world in the last few years, um, whether that's been fueled by you know, government uh, assistance that obviously people have been um, hoarding the, the cash to then obviously take advantage of opportunities. So there obviously there's a few different factors that have been playing, but uh, I know here in Australia, in Brisbane, we've had the same experience. Um, I mean, in, in Brisbane in particular, we've had 20%, um, actually the official actually put a post up on the newspaper yesterday that our official um, increase in property values here in Brisbane uh, has been 26% in the last 12 months. Um, again, is that sustainable? We probably, I mean, next 12 months probably won't be at that same level, but it will still be somewhere around the 10, 15 percent conservatively, um, and obviously ongoing for the next 10 years, given given the Olympics in 2032 and, and some of the other factors, drivers that are also impacting our property market here. So, uh, again, a, a good point you made because people are starting to prick their ears up and they say, "Well, we want to access property because we want we don't want to be left behind. We want to access some investment properties." And I guess now with you know, tokenized um, property, fractionalized property, people can actually have that ability to do so without actually having to go to the banks 
and we know how painful banks can be to borrow funds to buy property and hence why yeah, we did what we did in terms of um, creating um, Brick BC and uh, no doubt um, that's probably something that you also have thought Jake in terms of how can you take what you're doing to another level and, and, and get people on a journey and, um, and actually be uh, benefiting and accessing real estate property given yeah, in terms of what you, what you guys are doing in the past and what you're doing now as um, as builders and uh, from the well, well home side of things um, and I guess that's sort of um, the the problem that you're trying to solve as well, given banks are continuing to be challenging. <laughs> also, um, sorry, I just blanked. I just blanked out what I was going to talk about. Um, so the ownership of real estate, you know, it's it's a it's a form of diversification of your investment portfolio. Um, let's say your current investment portfolio. Let's you know, if you're you know you're a smaller person, you don't have you know a ton of money, but let's say you have ten thousand dollars in the stock market over a bunch of things. Um, Real estate tokenization allows you to, to diversify into, you know, a property or two. Or maybe you want to put your entire portfolio. Maybe you maybe you are someone with a lot of money who doesn't want to purchase a piece of property for $300,000 uh, because you're thinking, you know, this is all my eggs in one basket. Well, real estate tokenization, allow, or, you know, tokenization of these properties um, allows you to go throw $5,000 here, $10,000 there, and now you're $300,000. Is, is spread out across 20 pro- properties. You don't have to worry about, you know, one of the properties failing or maybe maybe not failing, but, you know, there could be something that happens in one of the properties, like a fire, or maybe uh, it just doesn't, the value of that property just doesn't go up as much as expected or it goes down. So it's, it's, it's not just the ability of owning one piece of land or, you know, proportionally, it's being able to diversify your investment across the, the scope of all real estate around the world, you know, given everything is done the right way. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And I actually went on. To, I've been going. I've been participating in a in a traditional real estate um, investment space um, um, that's hosted by Mary, Marianne, and Chris. Um, so, Marianne is a is a realtor uh, in California. Um, Mary, Mary, actually, I had Mary on our show uh, a few weeks ago, and she's a real estate investor in in Florida. And Chris is actually a real to himself as well, and a few other things that he's involved with. Um, but again, for, for them, they, they didn't really know what um, real estate tokenization when I sort of participated on their space around what three months ago. And again, it's about educating in terms of the access and to become make them more aware. And, and as I said, I said to them on, on, the, on their show a few times, we're not saying that um, you know, traditional real estate is um, you got to stop doing that and go totally to, um, you know, tokenized real estate. All we're saying is that um, yeah, tokenized real estate will complement your um, real estate portfolio, your wealth portfolio, because uh, as the point you made, Jay, it gives you diversity across different properties, across different states, across different countries. And again, which before we, we, we can never do that if we're in the past. But now what I'm saying is that we're not saying that you've got to stop doing your traditional real estate. All we're saying is just, just um, consider tokenized real estate to complement your portfolio of, um, of wealth. And, uh, and I guess it's a, it's a bit of a slow burn because if people don't, who don't understand blockchain or crypto projects, they're, they're very hesitant in terms of getting into that world. And, um, but again, from our perspective with property is um, always, always trying to emphasize that the token is actually by real estate property, by hard stuff. It's not, it's not a virtual thing. It's the hard stuff that's actually backing that, um, that token, that property token. And I guess it's just that slow slow education that people have never been in the blockchain or crypto world and um and i guess you probably experience the same thing jake people that um, are still coming to mo- coming to sort of uh to the comprehension of um how blockchain and and, um, and crypto projects work and how to sort of the ties to property yeah but yeah, it's um, we're still early we're still early um Look, in terms of we're just getting close, and please, if there's people on, we can give you the mic if you'd like to some ask any questions. And um, again, if there's some things you want to share that um, in terms of the the topic we're talking about, um, please um, send it, put up an invite so we can add you as a speaker. Um, some really good a couple a couple of things that I do want to mention as well, Jake. Um, that's been happening um, with um, with the. Um, Kevin, obviously, Kevin Lynch, um, he's l- l- launching his uh, land up. Well, obviously, we had him on last week, on last week's shows, and and, and f- it was a fantastic um, session with him in terms of sharing some of the things that, uh, that he's doing, that he's done, 
and uh, things in, that are coming forward. Um, I know Sonny's been working closely with him. If there's anything you want to share, Sonny, uh, I know that um, it was put on the, um, I think it was shared on the, a tweet that um, the land arts, it's about to, to be released. It's been minted, right? Sonny, if, uh, if you do want to give us an update on uh, on that, uh, if not, it's all good. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, like in terms of using art for our properties, uh, we're really excited that um, obviously we keep buying from great artists on the, in the Ravencorn community. And then, um, and as I said before, and I said last week, we like to think that um, with each of our property token series that we build up, we have the ability to buy one of Kevin's um, land art pieces to put in the property and obviously part, be part of the asset within the token series at the same time. Um, let's say it's, uh, uh, we, 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 well, we got, we got brave land on this, um, this weekend. So no doubt we'll get a few people there and give me some updates in terms of what's happening. Hopefully that, um, Kevin can attend and, uh, be able to maybe, um, maybe, but that could be the launch, maybe of his, um, land art. I'm not sure where it's at, but, um, I'm not putting any words in Sonny's, Sonny's mouth, but, um, we're looking forward to that. Um, yeah, probably a couple other things that have been happening in the community um, with um, Just NFT. So Ryan from Just NFTs and Ravenist, um, that um, the, the, the ladies at the SDO market spilling the NFTs, they're actually um, featuring them as well. Um, and I think it's actually this week's show that they're, feature, that they're featuring um, the release. They're opening up the box of goodies that Ryan sent them over to them. So again, it's a great engagement there to exposing just NFTs and, um, and Ravenist um, and at the marketplace, um, which always says, as, as we all said, it's, it's, uh, it's these sort of things raises all boats um, in, in, that, in our Ravencoin community. So um, some great, so the, so the ladies continue to be big supporters of the Ravencoin. And um, I think we can, the least we can do is also support all the activities they're doing in terms of their YouTube channel and so forth and create activity in supporting them because they put some um, some great information around you know, what is cryptos, what is NFTs, what is asset tokenization in, in a very simple language, and uh, and I always use uh, actually always use their links uh, if I'm trying to uh, provide education to somebody around um, you know, in terms of crypto, what is blockchain, and they've got some great things there to great some great resources they've created on YouTube to just basic using simple language. So, um, so it sort of complements what, what we say in terms of what I say and, and sometimes it's always good to hear maybe from another perspective in a, probably a much more simpler manner. Um, so they, they continue to be great supporters of the Ravencoin community, the, the ladies, um, Jessica and Megan. Um, just got another point here. Um, community DAO, so I think Community DAO actually spoke DAO actually um, over, the last, over the last day and... Um, they're, they're minting on the right on the Ravencoin chain, so they've got a few things that are happening there. So hopefully we'll get a bit of an update from from them at that uh, at Braveland this weekend. Um, so some really great things happening within our community. Some new projects, some new faces. Uh, I see there's a few new artists on Ravenous as well. Um, so obviously we had the release of the of the apes um, by Whitehash, and um, so there was uh, another another great project there. But uh, by Whitehash's collection. Um, Anything you're just seeing, Jake, um, from your end? Uh, any sort of thing that you want to share that's, um, that's uh, updating in terms of whether it's property or just basically around the Ravencoin community? Are you still there, Jake? Hey, right, Jake? You good? I must have lost his mind. Um, yeah, so basically we'll try to keep to the, to the hour. Um, and again if, the, again, if there's anybody who wants to say anything, please um, come up and um, we'll give you the mic. Um, otherwise, we'll sort of start um, wrapping up things for this week, um, this week's show. Um, again, just a reminder that um, with Braveland, uh, we put the links up there. So it's on the in the Braveland um, um, group. Um, we've, we try to share across different, um, different areas of the... Of Twitter, um, so we um, this Saturday at four o'clock um, US Eastern Standard Time um, is where we ho- where we're having the the uh, Brave Lands Gems on the beach. Um, so again, we'll start um, with a bit of an update, or, or, or people basically sharing their project in terms of what's happening now or what they're planning for. So again, provides a bit of an insights in terms of what's happening on the um, on the um, on the Ravencoin blockchain. So um, 
And then we go into a concert by SOS against some new materials, some um, some great ideas, these different personalities. <laughs> he's, he's gathering all these personalities, different names, uh, musicians um, to perform on stage again. He's great music. And, um, and then obviously um, there'll be some boats around. So uh, if you want to take on the new world champion of boat, it's actually Indy. She's looking for challenges. Uh, Xander lost his title at the last month's event, so uh, Indy's looking for some challenges to challenge her onto the, of her title. Um, but yeah, Raven Skulls, how are you? Hey, how are you, Rick? Um, good, good. Yes, I, I, I did have a question. I'm going on the website, uh, the brickbcprojects.com, yeah. and, and registering. Um, and, I, and I sent through for the email verification. Uh, it's been a few minutes, and I'm checking, you know, spam and junk. Uh, yes. It hasn't come through yet. Is uh, does that take a little while, or? I'll check with the team. I'll check with the team. So you just sent it before, did you? Just before, was it? Or? Yeah, just just a couple minutes ago. But okay. I can I'll, I'll, I can DM you my email address that I sent it. With okay. And, uh, okay. Okay. I'll check with the team, and um, now we, we do we do try to turn that around very within an hour at least. So um, so I'll okay. check and see what's happening there. But, um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't sure if it was like supposed yeah. to be instantaneous or not, but it's, it's only been a few minutes. So no, okay. okay, thank you so much, Raven yeah. Skulls. Yeah, keep an eye out. Thank you. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, so yeah, uh, no doubt, Raven Skulls, you'll be joining us at uh, at Braveland. So I look forward to seeing you there and. Um, Anything, uh, anything that's uh, that we should know what's happening from your end? Uh, anything sort of exciting, without sort of sharing, uh, uh, without sort of uh, releasing the full details before Braveland? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, um, I teased that um, sort of that race car, um, you know, race car series that's yes. that's coming up, and uh, you know, I, I got some good feedback from some different community members with regards to, you know, do I do multiples of these? Do I do one of ones and, uh, kind of, kind of leaning towards that one of ones and going that route because, you know, people just have an appreciation for uh, unique ones. Although, you know, it was like dozens of other ones, hand drawn ones that, um, kind of had different characters in the background, et cetera. Uh, but the main character was, was the same. But so basically at this point we have 10 of them done. I don't know how deep um, the series will go in. Um, I guess we'll just see, you know, how they do at auction and if they continue, you know, we'll mint a few more. But no, I want to keep it like kind of nice and slow, sort of like, um, the um, the one that does the um, uh, the Ravenauts. Uh, yes. I see he he kind of you know mm-hmm. cues them up nice and slow, does them for auctions yeah. or uh, you know Cronenberg, um, yes. you know, so, sort of like that. So um, nice. you know, we'll see how it goes, but ha- having fun with it for sure. Nice, nice. So so we can have the official launch at Braveland on Saturday from you. <laughs> that would be a good nice. launch, right? <laughs> yeah, I think it's gonna take a little more because, uh, like, most most of them are in color, yes. but um, there's a couple still uh, remaining that uh, that need the the final color done on them. So right, right. But yeah, definitely uh, stay tuned. And um, you know, it's fun. It's gonna have a uh, a cause also associated with it that you know a lot of people can probably relate to. So we'll release it at that time. Nice, nice. So we'll look forward to seeing you on, on Saturday anyway. So whether, whether there's an official launch from you or not, so we'll look forward to seeing you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, I meant to ask you, uh, were you able to give away any of those uh, those AMC MOAS coins? Did you ever? Yes. <laughs> yes. I, cool. I actually, I've always, um, especially when people come into our community, they're just new. I like to share um, you know, some NFTs. And um, I, I always like to share yours uh, because I think that was a bit of fun as well. And um, actually, with um, with Crypto Stash, uh, that funny enough, we were talking last weekend with um, on Xander's show that he hosted on the Space Show, and we were talking about Crypto Stash because he's a big NFT, like he's been around for years on NFTs and and also the game side of things. And um, 
And uh, he, he, yesterday he actually posted up in terms of, um, you know, what's the best um, NFT community. And, and he responded back to obviously the Ravencoin and put a few things. And then obviously everybody has got behind that, that, that feed. Um, so again, I'm, I'm just waiting for his, um, his public address from the Ravencoin public address to send him a few NFTs, including yours. <laughs> oh, that's cool. yeah. yeah, that's a pretty yeah, cool. Because always puts a laugh on people's face when I send that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. I mean, I, I always felt like when I first got into uh, you know the Raven Coin community, is that one guy that did um, uh, the Dakota Coin? I don't know if you've ever seen those. They, they kind of rotate similar to the uh, the AMC, the Moas Coin. Yes. Uh, and, you know. People always love getting like a coin. I don't know what it is about it, but you know, one that's you know kind of rotating and it's got some reflection off of it. Yes. Um, that's kind of where you know got the inspiration for for doing that one. And you know, there's there's ten thousand of them, so if yeah. they're just giveaways, get um, new community members to yeah. you know download a wallet, uh, whether it's Moon Tree or Mango Farm, but uh, you know it's. So it's good just to draw people in and they want to get get their hands on one. Exactly. I think I actually gave um, Jessica, actually, because I, uh, from the SDO market, the ladies at the SDO market, because I sent a whole heap to, to Jessica and, I, um, and she got one of yours as well. So, um, again, it always puts a smile on people's face. And I got the smile from her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I, just, I just like that, you know, maybe you can draw in some of the AMC apes just because of, you know. Yeah. You know, their cause is the same as ours. Yeah, you know, so. 100%. 100%. Yep. But thank you. But thank you for that. And, um, but yeah, look, um, I'd like to thank you all. Hey, uh, hey I'm back. I'm sorry. Sorry, Jake. And, and just, we're just wrapping up. Anything that's um, from yours? I, just found, I found my, I couldn't find my way back in the space once I got kicked the first time, but I, I found my way back. I guess I'm you still did? coming. Oh, sorry about that. That's all right, mate. That's all right. We're just, just wrapping up. Anything from your end before we wrap up? Uh, no, I guess I could just say uh, for anyone out there right now looking to find your way into a project, please do your due diligence. Please uh, uh, do the Howey test for any project. Uh, make sure you're not investing into an unregistered security because things are being cracked down upon. Uh, the Open C, one of the Open C founders just got you know charged uh, for insider trading. Uh, so you know, and, and it's a wild, it's the wild west out there right now. So make sure you're. You're, if, you, if something sounds good, too good to be true, it is too good to be true, unless they've gone through the proper proper things uh, so that uh, investor risk is uh, lowered um, that way. So just make sure you're, you know, you're doing your due diligence. That's all I want to end this off with. That's great. Thanks, Jake. Thank you for that. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us. Um, hope you've enjoyed today, this week's show and uh, got some, some value from it. And um, again, the same time, same place. It's... Um, we're working on a few special guests over the next few weeks that I've um, reached out for. So, um, again, uh, thank you, Jake, for sharing some of the insights with the Renew Blocks today. Um, and sorry to put you on the spot because you didn't know it was coming. <laughs> but to, <laughs> given the activity, I think it was appropriate to, to actually have you speak a bit more deeper about in terms of what's been happening with Renew Blocks. As, as obviously, it is a tech, is an asset tech nice pro, um, project. So, um, especially being on the Ravencoin chain. So um, thank you so much for sharing those insights with us. Um, again, thank you, Saul. Thank you all. Have a safe day and stay safe. Bye for now.